Okay, peeps, last question from the mock. Um, this is definitely one that if you didn't manage to get it done, I really think you need to learn how to do it. I like this a lot. Um, so the basic gist is, it is a right pain to work out what moves are available. So the idea of having a list of all the um, possible moves will be dead useful. And having it printed on the board, actually that's not very useful, but it's it's the obvious thing to do. Um, and most of it's there. Um, and it kind of tells you you've got to create a new method. Um, and it then tells you exactly how it should work. Also gives you a bit of a hint which is quite nice. It also says about copying the board. So it gives you lots and lots and lots. Let's get on with it. So we're going to start off by creating this print moves method. Um, I'm just putting this above play game because then I can sort of see what's going on. Uh, right, first things first. So, I was told I need the choice and the start ref, so that's what I've done. And that would almost certainly be worth a mark, so I'm going to give you a mark for that. Um, I'm also going to create a list for the possible moves. There, You could just print it on the fly, but I want to use it more than once, so I might as well create them as a list. Uh, and I'm going to copy the board. Right. If you just do a copy of an array or a list, it copies the reference to it. So if you make a change, it changes in both the copy you've made and the original. Um, there's a few ways of doing this, but the easiest way is to use this deep copy. Deep copy makes a proper separate copy. Unfortunately, you need to use the copy Dubri. So if you ever get asked to do that in an exam, they'll almost certainly um, tell you that. Well, they won't actually, because it'd be in multiple languages. But anyway, if you have to make a copy, that's what you'll you'll have to do. Um, so we've now got a copy called temp board. I'm actually going to work on the board. But what I'll do is at the end, I'll copy the temp board back. Uh, right. I think this little block of three lines of code, everyone needs to know exactly how it works. Because what this does is generates a list of all of the possible cell references on the board. Not all the valid ones, this is all of them. 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 1 4, 1 5, 1 6, 2 1, 2 3, 2 4, 2 5, 2 6. You get the idea. That is dead useful really useful um, I could probably have done it in a better way than this but I just like it just, when I'm reading it it just makes sense to me to to go through rows and columns as, as two loops it's up to you there, there, there isn't there is a more truncated way of doing it but that's really clear what it's doing just be careful about the ranges uh, where are we Right, this next little block of code. Hopefully you recognise check square is valid. Hopefully you recognise check player move. Um, these are just returning booleans. And again, I could, I could have put those in one line. I could have said if check square is valid, blah, 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 and uh, check player move. Make sure you really understand how I access this, because it's really important it's current player. You can't just access this on its own. Uh, anyway, if these two are true, then I'm just going to add the current reference, which I've made, I'm going to whack it onto a list. So that possible moves will just be a list of, I don't know, 
two four. You get the idea. Um, right and at this stage, I now have a list. I'm not printing anything. I've just got a list of all the value moves. I could have printed there actually, thinking about it, but I haven't. Uh, right. So I've decided to print it here, and it said to print it all on one line. And hopefully, you all know how to print onto one line. It doesn't matter what this is called. It's called banana. Could be called bananas. So for all bananas, impossible moves. But as long as I print bananas, it's fine. Um, now the reason why I didn't print before is because I can now use this little loop to also print onto the board. So this bit's a bit tricky actually. It took me a couple of goes. Uh, or forget the little extra print. But this bad boy is quite sneaky. So first of all, that is just a particular square on the board. There is a method that if you give it a reference like 1 1 or 2 1 or 5 7, no, not 5 7, 5 6, then it will translate it to the index of the board because the board is not a 2D array, it's a 1D list. So it's a 1D list, and if the board size is 6 by 6, then it is uh, as simple as a 36 cell list going from 1 to 36. Oh, sorry, 0 to 35. So this whole shebang, you give it a reference, it gets the index, it puts the index into board, so therefore this is a square. One of the methods of square is set piece. But you've got to give that a piece. You can't just dump an M onto it. If you try and dump an M just to display it, it won't work because it'll fall over when you actually try and display the board. So you've got to give it a bit. This was given you as a, as a hint. Um, It doesn't matter what that is because it's just a name that's got to be current player otherwise it won't work that's the number of points so i just pick zero but crucially that this is the really important one this is the what what actually gets displayed on the board uh, so in this case it's an m so i could have called this movie but movie muck move face or whatever it's that m that's important and if you don't have current player it will, it won't like it. It needs to be a player. I'm trying to think if the player's actually being used. Anyway, uh, two marks for this. One for successfully referencing the, the board and two for successfully instantiating a piece and sticking it into set piece. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that's all the hard work. The last two little things need to actually display the board because we haven't displayed it. This just writes the board a bit like create board but overwrites it. This bit displays it well that's already written and that's why we had to use board and not temp board because display board you don't pass it board it refers to board in the class and at the end we take our temp board which was like our safe backup, that backup board would have been a better name for it. And we, we overwrite the copy of, of board. Oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is quite, quite sneaky. I like that. Uh, there's not like a million ways, other ways of doing it either. Uh, so that makes it me feel like that is actually quite, apart from this deep copy, that makes me feel like it's quite a, a possible one. I'm not sure about the M's, but certainly the printing of possible moves, that's a, I reckon that's quite likely. Um, and in fact, if you were just printing the possible moves, you wouldn't have to bother with this copy of the board. Anyway, we better call it. 
That's the second part of it. Where were we? Uh, -a -a right, dead easy. Just literally call it and pass it choice and the start square reference. Uh, one mark for the correct call, one mark for passing that correctly. Um, and that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry, we ought to test it. I've, 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 just give me a second. Okay, I've got it already here. So um, you were told to use 3 and 24. Those are the possible moves. And it displays it on the board like that. Um, and just to pr really for me, it should have been a part of the test. So if I choose 4 4, which is one of the options, does it actually go back? Should we see if it, I haven't actually tested this. Should we see if it works for player two? Should do. So if we choose one and choose five five, uh, so we can move back, forward, or right, but we can't move there. Looks like it works. Six five five six six five. That's correct. So we can choose one of those. See, that is actually a genuinely useful thing. I like that a lot. I think that's that's quite likely to come up. 